Hi, my name is Tony. I am a senior program manager with Microsoft, and I'd like to give you an overview of a West session titled Option ROM Designs for UEFI. In this particular session, we really focused on the IHV community and the role that they play in designing Option ROMs that are UEFI compatible uh, or, or designed in the, in the UEFI framework. Uh, we discussed the reasons why UEFI is important to Microsoft. However, with particular focus to the IHVs, uh, this session really highlights the, the challenging areas for UEFI option ROMs and the, you know, only one of the many different areas that UEFI can uh, provide and offer support as well as some framework to, to reduce the complexity of your code. Now, how is Microsoft helping Option ROM designers? As we said earlier, Microsoft is offering a signing service through WinQual. Um, that signing service will be free of charge to use to WinQual members, even though there is an administrative cost to set up a WinQual account. Um, however, WinQual, I think for the IHVs, is already a familiar process, and Microsoft has the honor of hosting more than 11,000 uh, hardware companies worldwide as, as part of WinQual. Um, we are looking to uh, also help generate demand for your UEFI option ROMs through direct partner engagement and also through customer, uh, customer awareness. Uh, we engage directly with the IHV community, the OEM, the ODM, as well as the BIOS uh, designers to help generate demand. So by this point, if you are active in the uh, Windows ecosystem, if you <clears throat> develop hardware for OEMs, you should already be entertaining um, requests from the OEMs in you have us to thank for that. So uh, you're welcome, and uh, we hope that uh, that is generating new business for you. And then lastly, uh, we engage with the IHVs um, across the board on UEFI option ROM adoption. Um, many of the critical IHVs who develop both uh, display, network, storage, and uh, n um, uh, input devices are of particular importance that they develop UEFI option ROMs uh, as, as quickly as possible. For this session, we had Brian Richardson, who is a senior technical marketing engineer from Intel, uh, who gave an excellent overview of <clears throat> what are the key concepts behind using UEFI and option ROMs. One of the biggest concepts is that it provides a clean model for driver design without legacy uh, interrupt limitations, uh, screen resolutions, etc. It also provides a consistent end user interface for setting up your devices during the boot process. Um, the overall goal is to design um, uh, smaller option ROM code, uh, more quicker code, more streamlined code, and um, also, it's based on industry standards. You know, it's based on the UEFI spec, and there are over 180 member companies of the UEFI uh, forum. So this is all really standards-based, uh, whereas previously in BIOS, there was no single standard or owner for some of the services provided. And it really caused option ROM codes to, to bloat, to become very specific to certain hardware, certain bus types, uh, so forth and so on. So in this presentation that Brian delivered, uh, he focused on HII, which is a, a human input interface uh, uh, specification, uh, which is part of the UEFI specification. And there's a general recognition that the uh, code required to write to the screen, to write setup um, text, for instance, like uh, in the past when you would boot on a legacy BIOS machine, you would have to press Control S or some proprietary key to get into a uh, uh, RAID setup or network setup or Pixie boot or something like that. Uh, all that stuff came from the Option ROM driver on the hardware, and, and of course, you know, the the driver router had no notion of uh, of the target system, so it would essentially be basic text. With HII, there's a markup language, there is the ability to uh, define standard setup options, and then you leave it to the firmware to display those options in, in a means that is best suitable for that target platform, and in some cases maybe even make some default uh, option choices for you. So for the, op for the UEFI option ROM driver writer, uh, it really enables you to really focus more on the basics of your uh, code to both initialize your hardware and get it ready for the OS. Uh, again, we ask that when you write uh, HII code that you uh, code to the specification and not an implementation of any specific toolkit. 
uh, it's important if it's written to the specification your code's portable and uh, you can uh, uh, implement it across multiple architectures. And then also, uh, we encourage you to test it against multiple UEFI impl implementations. Um, the UEFI plug fests are an excellent opportunity for you to meet others in the ecosystem as well as testing your hardware in uh, others' systems as well. Um, understand the difference between uh, specific uh, OEM setup browser requirements and HII. Uh, make sure that your drivers are written to HII from, you know, specifically the UEFI specification and uh, focus your testing on what would your option ROMs do on a class 3 system. So that's basically a system without CSM. And so the basic point of that is don't depend on any legacy services in the system. If you truly write your drivers to a class 3 model, uh, it'll work both in the class 2 without CSM as well as a class 3 which ne doesn't even have the option of a CSM. And as you know, Windows 8 is capable of running on class 3 hardware and class 3 hardware does exist today from Intel and that's called the Tunnel Mountain hardware. You can get more information on that from tunnelmountain.net. Now, as far as relevant information from the UEFI specification, there's a slide which details different sections of the HII protocol and, and interfaces and how to access those. Um, definitely encourage you to uh, consider those and also consider whether or not you want to write in the native code or as EFI bytecode. Um, we have no particular opinions on that. However, uh, it's perhaps something you might want to investigate as well. So in closing, you know, this is really a session that was geared more towards the IHV as well as perhaps some OEMs who developed their own hardware. Uh, we hope you got some uh, best practices. We hope if you have not begun writing your uh, option ROMs in UEFI that you would consider doing so quickly. Uh, if you already have UEFI option ROM um, code but you don't have the hardware to test it, Perhaps you can pick up some test hardware, perhaps you can play with Windows 8, uh, but the basic idea is that the tools and the certification requirements and the resources all exist today to enable you to design uh, those option ROMs today in time for the Windows 8 launch. Particular call to action is uh, consider how do you plan to install and deploy your option ROMs. That's a big question moving into the future, right? Uh, we have the ability to insert uh, option ROMs into the ESP, that's the EFI system partition. Uh, perhaps uh, you want to deploy it in another manner, but uh, really trying to understand how to deploy your option ROMs in the future is going to be a uh, very important topic that you should consider today. And, and also Intel provides training events and so uh, I don't work for Intel but we are uh, uh, partners with them and uh, Brian did mention that uh, there are training events and you can go to the UEFI uh, website for more information. Now in terms of further reading and documentation we encourage you to review this slide deck as well as others as part of WES. Uh, there is a UEFI learning center off of UEFI.org, various other resources, of course there's a specification and there's also the Windows certification requirements which today are available through Connect. And then lastly, should you want to review the Tiano Core reference impl implementation by Intel, there is a mailing list where you can uh, ask questions from the uh, community of developers that work in the Tiano Core space. Again, thank you very much for reviewing this uh, slide deck with me. My name is Tony Mangifesti and I work for Microsoft.